Hey there, I'm Mary Gilkerson, and I've been answering a question a day for the past week, basically, over in my stories. But today's question really needed to go a little larger than I can go over in stories. So, decided to go live. Today's question is, how do you mix the whites for clouds? Sounds like such a simple question, doesn't it? But the truth of the matter is that clouds aren't white. They're almost never really pure white. So if you try to use white to paint your clouds, it's going to look funky and really kind of flat. So instead, if you can shut down that logical part of your mind that's telling you what it knows rather than what it sees, look for ways to mix light colors, very, very, very light colors that either are a little warmer or a little cooler so that you're playing off warm and cool color relationships as well as value relationships. But they've got to be really light but not pure white. So I'm going to take us over to my palette where I've got a bunch of the tubes of close white that I use occasionally when I'm using a convenience color. Then I'm going to show you how to mix a couple of those too. So hang tight while we flip the camera around and head over to the palette. So swerving slowly here. Okay, and let's flip the camera and go down to the palette here. So these are my favorite lights. I'm going to have that turn around already. Gamblin makes some of the best whites that are out there, hands down. They specialize in whites, so you have a full range of lots and lots of different whites. Williamsburg's coming right up behind them, though, too. So this first one is the main white that I use for all of my mixing of light colors, light values that have white in them. I use Gamblin's Flake White Replacement. It's mainly titanium. Oh, it is all titanium, but it's thickened so that it's closer to what flake white is really like. It's not lead, it's not toxic, it's titanium white. That's my go-to white. That's one reason it's so big. Then over here next to it is a smaller tube of radiant white. And I'm going to show you the difference in those two in just a minute. So Radiant White is a little bit starker white, another gambling product. Then one of my favorite whites, if I'm going to use one out of the tube, is Gamblin's Warm White. It's so useful. It's a white, a titanium white, that is slightly warmed up to a very, 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 very light tan. Then the next one over here is one that I bought for myself as a treat after working on a project. It is Williamsburg's Titanium Buff. It is a brand new color that they just brought out and it's really very different from Gamblin's Warm White. I thought it was going to be almost the same, but it's not. You'll see that in just a minute. It's got a little bit of a pink cast to it. Then another favorite from Gamblin, not strictly a white, is but it's useful in painting skies, and it's still a very light color, is the Portland Warm Gray. And one of my all-time favorites, always a little different from year to year, is Gamblin's Torrid Gray. So those are the only ones that I really use on any regular basis. And up here, you can see them laid out on the palette in roughly the same order. So on the far left over there, you have the radiant white. Right over here is the regular flake white replacement. And you can see that the radiant white is a little cooler, a little brighter. Then next to it is the warm white. Can you all see how different those two are? Radiant White is much, much lighter and brighter. Then next to that is the um, Titanium Buff. So you can hold that still. 
titanium buff is the one from Williamsburg and it has a little tiny bit of a pink cast to it so it's a different warm color than the warm white. Then next to that one is the Portland Gray from Gamblin. It's a nice warm gray. It's not very blue. And next to that one is my old favorite Toric Gray. So if we're going to mix something similar to those for those lighter values in a cloud then I'm going to want to have something that has a little bit of blue in it in order to have a light, cool white. So if I take a tiny little bit of ultramarine and a tiny little bit of phthalo on my knife, very small amounts, because it doesn't take much to have an impact. You can see how little there is on there right now. And I'm going to mix that in over here into this pile of white so that I get a really, really light white that is a little bluer. If it goes too blue, always lighten it up a little bit more. Clouds have a lot of blue in them, so you need a light, light cool white. So this is my first one. See my shadow over there for the clouds already laying out there. Then I'm going to make one that's even lighter by just taking what was already on my knife and mixing that into that pile of white that I had next to it. I need a little bit more color to it. I can keep adding a little bit. So it's still going to look fairly white. It'll be much lighter than that one I mixed just a second ago. But think of it as white with a, a blue tint, a blue screen on top of it, so to speak. So let's see if I can get that to focus. There we go. And you'll really be able to tell a difference if I put a little bit of that wipe that knife off here next to a little bit of the regular white. So here are the two side by side. Can you see how much bluer the one on the left is than the regular white? So it's a little bit bluer than the regular white right there. So, Deepa, take a look right there, and I think you can see the difference. My phone keeps wanting to refocus. Sorry about that. So, then, I want to mix something that's closer to the warm white in this next pile of white. So, a warm white has just a little bit of something like yellow ochre in it. Now, Indian yellow is a real favorite yellow of mine, but it's too yellow for cloud color, really, for the most part, except when the sunlight's hitting it. So here I've got a little bit of yellow ochre going into that pile. And that is going to make it almost exactly identical to the warm white. You can see that over here if the camera will focus now. There we go. They're almost exactly the same. And again, that's going to look really different to the cool white that I just mixed if I put them side by side. There we go. Now you can see them side by side. See what a huge difference that is. So wipe my knife off. I've just accidentally picked up a huge pile of yellow. I'm going to have to switch mixing knives. Then to mix something that is more like the titanium buff, I'm going to take a little tiny bit, in this case of Montserrat orange, but I could also take a little bit of either cadmium red or this warm red down here. It's just that the Montserrat orange already has white in it, so it's not going to be as hard to pick up just a tiny little bit. So I'm going to add that 
to this pile to get something that is pinker than the warm white. I can make it even a little bit more exaggerated in its pinkness. There we go. So it goes even warmer. So you can see here, I've got lots of different whites now. I've got going from a really warm that has a lot of pink to it to um, one that has a little bit of yellow in it to one that has a little bit of blue in it. So that gives you a big range in your lightest lights for the clouds. Really easy to mix but you just need to knock off the pure whiteness of it. That will take care of it. So go experiment and play with what you can do in mixing colors that are light, but not pure white. So they end up with more dimension in your paintings. So that is just about all for now. Let me switch the phone back around and and I can see if there are any questions on there and move my thumb out of the way. I'm really good at sticking that finger right up in the middle of the screen. I'm a pro at that. So if you're curious about what I'm doing with the 31 cloud projects, you can, where well, I'm doing a, a painting a day of clouds and sharing little sneak peeks with my email list, pop up to the link up in my profile and you can sign right up to get those previews and those sneak peeks. I'm going to be showing the whole collection of those 31 clouds to the public, sharing it publicly on Tuesday. Cannot wait to do that. My email list, though, they get not just the sneak peeks, they get to see the whole thing a whole day early. So, hope you can join me for the preview, the VIP preview, on Monday. So let me see if we have any other questions in here. Robin says, if you mix the yellow and blue white, will it go to a green tint? It sure will. And that's really useful too sometimes, Robin. Um, let me switch the phone back around. And I'll show you a slightly darker version of that. So this color up here is not looking quite as green as it really is. The phone is exaggerating it a little bit. It's not quite that dark, but I use a blue, slightly greened blue, um, a lot of times in landscape paintings because it's the color of the sky along the horizon. So yeah, it'll go a little greeny, and that's also useful in clouds because you have to remember if you go out and watch the clouds that if they're full of rain, they're going to be darker and they're going to be a little greener. So. They'll change from those light fluffy clouds to something that is a little bit um, more bluey greeny color when they're getting ready to share some rain with us, which we sure need here. But let's see if there are any other questions on there. Um, Vera says, are you working with acrylic or oils? I am working with oils here, Vera, but the same thing holds true if you're working with acrylics. It's the same exact thing. Hey, Ginger, it's good to see you and Judy Freights. And let me see, I think there was another question back up here. Good, I'm glad you got your sound working there, Terry. That's frustrating when it doesn't work. It can be really frustrating. So if you have any other questions, hello, Ron Dudley, my darling cousin, um, <laughs> trolling me here. Um, that's my cheering section there. That's my big brother cousin. Um, any other questions that people have? Colors for gray, um, they're really pretty similar. Let me see who's asking that one. Susan's asking about that. Um, colors for gray clouds, I use almost the same kind of colors, but just neutralize the color a little bit so that it's not quite as intense. So I will use blues, the same blues I'll use for the sky, and then knock the blue back with its complement a little bit in order to make it more gray and less pure. 
but there are actually an awful lot of blues and violets in the clouds, in the dark parts of the clouds, too. So you have to release a lot of your preconceptions, even when you're talking about the gray part of the clouds. I can hold the grays, though, and mix some grays on the next Facebook Live. Be happy to do that. Rosalind says, what brand of white are you using? Gamblin. I love Gamblin's Flake White Replacement, so that is what I use all the time. Let's see. Deepa says, can you please talk about colors for clouds above us and in the distance and in the middle? It entirely depends on the weather, Deepa. Um, if you are looking away from the sun, then things that are further away are going to tend to be lighter. If you're looking towards the sun, things that are further away are going to be in silhouette. So it just depends. And that holds true for whether you're talking about clouds, trees, cows, trains, buildings, whatever. So Deepa, if you don't have my handout on atmospheric perspective, hop over to my website. I'll try to remember to put the link down in here too. Um, but hop over to my website and download that handout because it'll give you a really quick cheat sheet so you can keep that in the studio and refer back to it. Catherine says, did you say you use ultramarine and thalo blue for the sky? I sure did. Those are the two blues, main blues that I paint with, and those are what I use for the sky colors. So I mix different proportions of each one to mix up the sky colors. And you can see those over in, I think, my last Facebook Live when I talked about the blues. Cool. That is all I've got time for today. So thank you all so much for joining me.